This, my friends, is the ZWO C-Star S50 Smart Robo Telescope. And with this thing, I was able to capture this image of the Pelican Nebula, 1800 light years away, by the way, in five minutes, and a video showing the increased sunspot activity of our sun in the same amount of time, among other things. And sure, it won't replace your expensive deep sky rigs that cost, I don't know, more than a car, but the beauty of the S50 is its accessible versatility. It's so easy to use, even a caveman can use it. What? <laughs> um, not cool. I did not well, know you were there. Yes. I could know. I could... The ZWO C Star S50 retails for $500 and it comes in one colorway like this. It's black and it's all plastic for the most part. It's a fingerprint and dust magnet, so you have to make sure to keep it clean often. In the imaging arm, there's a 2.1 megapixel 1080p Sony IMX 462 rolling shutter CMOS with 50mm aperture f5, 250mm focal length. Internally, there's 64 gigs of onboard storage where images can be saved in JPEG or FITS format and then can be offloaded onto another device for editing or stacking or whatever you want to do with it via USB-C. The weight is 6.5 pounds with the included tripod. Um, and there's a dew heater inside, guys. For those early moist mornings when you'd rather be spending indoors, this thing can be sitting outside no problem whatsoever. There's also a dual band filter to reduce but not fully eliminate light pollution and in terms of battery life i've been able to get 5.3 hours of shooting time out of this uh, which is really abundant for its size this thing also has bluetooth and wi-fi connectivity one thing that makes the s50 really work is its tracking mechanism that means it can follow objects in the sky without you having to fiddle with it and also allow for slightly longer exposures to take nicer photos of especially of deep sky objects it is of the more rudimentary alt azimuth kind that means the telescope isn't tilted to match the angle of your local gps latitude and therefore for can't follow objects along two axes at the same time, which means captured images might have some shearing or tearing towards the edges and may need editing uh, after the fact. But that's about it. Also included in the box is a carbon fiber tripod, which is screwed into the 3 8 screw head at the bottom middle of the unit, which is also something you can use to mount the device onto taller tripods if you like. Also included is a hard foam carry case. It's light, it's strong, which is really great. And also one more thing is the solo filter. You have to slap that on if you want to view the sun with it. So now that you're kind of aware of what the S50 has on the inside, the specs and all that, we can talk about who this telescope is for and in what scenarios it works best. And I dare say that the S50 is for everyone from the amateur deep sky photographer and local school astronomy club to full on astrophiles and folks who just aren't able to lug around and supervise a telescope system in the wee hours of the morning like right now. And thanks to its compact take anywhere kind of size and quick fire and forget functionality, the S50 is perfect, I think, for backyard star parties, road trips, camping, pretty much anywhere you have access to a clear open sky, even in urban suburban areas. But that being said, after using this telescope for a few months now, I definitely feel that ZWA has the younger generation specifically as its core target buyer, especially those with you know, 30 second attention spans and the constant need to post on Insta, which actually allows me to segue to my first pro. Fun is the operative word for this robo telescope. And sure, its very existence takes the satisfaction out of capturing an image with your own eyes, with sweat and tears from that dedicated rig you have stored in your garage. But for every other reason, I believe, the S50 covers the bases for quick and easy celestial discovery, image capture, and sharing straight to your socials. It's just a matter of ringing up a target you want to look at in the app, and then you let the machine do its thing, and then boom, minutes later, anyone gathered around your phone or your followers will have their minds blown. And for those times when I just want to kick back and be lazy, the S50 has my back as well. And the results are very acceptable, guys, and better than using, you know, a flagship smartphone on a tripod in astrophotography mode even. 
While it's not the most compact smart telescope out there, that honor goes to the Dwarf series, the Sea Star is still something that you can easily slap into the case and just pick up and go. And to me, it also looks just right. It still looks like a proper astronomy device that people would take seriously, and also not too small to compromise the kinds of innards you get, all in the name of downsizing. During my 3-4 months with the S50 alone, the app has received frequent updates to knock out bugs and add features, while recently with version 2.95, the app UI was given a nice spit and shine. So one of my initial cons about the app has been resolved too. Users can now assign favorites to objects for quick retrieval later on. And for the most part, the Seastar app is rock solid for beginners and seasoned pros alike. It's neither dumbed down nor a convoluted jargony mess that will turn users off. And users can easily find what they need either with the three viewing modes or via the catalog. And there's also a built-in stacking function, but I prefer to export to something like Serial for greater control. The tutorials are good as well, and Sky Atlas is one of my favorite screens to manually see what's in my current field of view. Although deeper information integration with like Simbad or Wikipedia, for what it's worth, would be cool. Okay, planetary imaging, like viewing planets in our own solar system itself, just outright sucks on this, let's be honest. Even giants like Saturn and Jupiter look like glowing zits in a dark sky or something, so you can forget about smaller objects like Mars or Neptune. And for this, you can thank the 50mm aperture for that, which works good for the moon and daytime targets in terms of closer objects, but I think the sensor is more about absorbing light and longer exposures for deep sky objects. And speaking of the sensor, there are numerous times when I really wish that the imaging sensor was more potent. Like seriously, 2 megapixels is just too low res, especially if you're planning on viewing your photos on a large screen or printing and framing them. And another bummer about the sensor, as well as proof that ZWO made the S50 almost specifically for social media, is the vertical orientation of the camera sensor. So that means everything is shot portrait. Now, besides the camera sensor, another part to consider is that in order to meet the $500 price point, the C-Star uses a lot of plastics as you can see, and especially in the gear drives. And as it is, longevity of those parts need to be accounted for, especially if you end up putting a lot of miles on your telescope. And granted, the C-Star community is super strong right now, and I've seen members already 3D printing parts for the telescope. And so it's only a matter of time before a solid gear design will become available. But until that happens, that's something you should be aware of. It's been pretty much one year since launch, and the Seastar S50 Robo Telescope still amazes me for its capabilities for the price. If there are chinks in the armor, it would be the imaging sensor and the lack of equatorial mount. And I understand that these came together to keep costs and weight down. And if I really had to pick one for version 2.0 of the telescope to improve, I'd say a bigger and better sensor, hands down guys. And the S50 is really something I believe that everyone should have in their arsenal, especially if you're interested in or are already part of the astrophotography hobby. It's modern, it's cheap contextually for what it is, it's fast, and it's super easy to use. And I really hope this segment as a whole gets more competitive too. Well, that's all I got today, guys. Thank you so much for being here and thanks for watching this. And also thanks to ZWO for entrusting me with this unit to share with you guys. I hope you found something useful. I know I'm not perfect, but nonetheless, if you like to see more content like this, if you like to see my channel grow, thumbs up this video, reshare it and subscribe if you can. Thank you so much for being here again. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world, because guess what? If you haven't seen the bloody news, the world needs it more than ever. And it starts with you. I love you all very much. Peace out and God bless.